So uh, we're going to start uh, to kick off a, a small discussion between uh, the four of us uh, about uh, startup ecosystem. So it's a uh, mot for two, as we say in French. Uh, we could put a lot of stuff in that. Uh, but basically, the main idea is trying to see how can uh, startups, but not only like uh, students, entrepreneurs, investors, can uh, work together uh, better? Is it a good idea to work with other startups when you're yourself a startup, or should you go after other corporate customers? Uh, how can we help each other? And those kind of, uh, of topics, this is what we're going to cover. And so we have a, represent, uh, a panel representing uh, different parts of uh, ecosystems. And uh, I will let you guys introduce yourself because you do it better than I. <laughs> uh, Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Joanna Kirk. I represent uh, Girls in Tech uh, at WeShare Festival, and um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, the Girls in Tech uh, that you may have heard of is a nonprofit association that was created in 2007 in San Francisco. Uh, and the French uh, part of Girls in Tech was created f nearly five years ago now by Roxanne Vaza, uh, head of Microsoft France. Uh, and our aim uh, is to empower and uh, help make um, women in the tech industry more visible. And we do this by organizing specific events and um, communicating on all the things that um, entrepreneurs and women in the tech industry do. Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Joan Villalomat from Entrepreneurs Break. Um, what we do is, is to, to bring entrepreneurship into the universities. That was our mission. We think that uh, the universities is a, a very important part of the startup ecosystem because it's the future of the ecosystem. So we think that nowadays uh, in the universities they are teach, uh, teaching us only to to find a job in a corporate world, but, but not to be an entrepreneur, at least in my country. I'm from Spain, by the way. And, and what we do is that, is to, to show the students that there is another way possible, that, uh, and how you, we do it. We, we bring two entrepreneurs, two local successful entrepreneurs, into an university, and we, we make like an informal discussion with the students, with questions and answers, and, and, and that's what, what we do. Uh, when you are a student, you, you don't have uh, financial obligations. You are surrounded by talent. So we think it's, uh, it's one of the best moments in your life to start, uh, at least to try to start a, a startup. So we are trying to do that in Spain and, and Portugal. I'm also a founder of uh, Parking Hood, that is a marketplace to share parking spaces. But I'm not here for this now. But Hello everyone, uh, I am Sébastien Forêt, uh, co-founder of uh, HowTank. So I will represent the startup side, trying to testify uh, about the ecosystem, how to make it better, uh, how it can, can be improved. Uh, HowTank, what we do, in a few words, uh, we do a community chat solution. Uh, so we invite the power users of a website to join uh, an environment who is like a forum, where they can gather together have a special relationship to the website, but, which is more important, have an access to the visitors who uh, can actually interact with this forum through a live chat widget, which is displayed on the pages. So for instance, if you go on one of our clients, like uh, Blablacar, you have a question, and without leaving the website, you just open a chat, you, you ask your question, and it is directly sent to the community who will answer you in real time, uh, more or less 24 hours, because you always have people connected to the form. Um, that's about it. Uh, maybe you can uh, start the debate now. OK. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So um, uh, first question uh, is like, uh, do we really need somebody to start an ecosystem? Like uh, an ecosystem, if we use that word, is, like in biology, it starts from itself normally. Or maybe there is a god, if you believe, but I don't know. <laughs> so uh, do we need to have like a? Startup god uh, or local god to create an ecosystem? Uh, is it something uh, I mean uh, you think is needed? And uh, and and then how do you st where do you start? Because it's like not an easy t an easy task. Okay, I'll I'll give my point of view. Um, when we look a few years back, um, 
and we think how startups uh, used to start up their uh, ideas, they were um, on their own basically. And when we look at today, uh, for instance, in, in Paris, we can see that there are 40 different incubators, 80 co-working spaces, and lots and lots of things going on to bring people together. So I think that naturally, um, the whole, not only startups, but the whole environment that is there to support startups uh, got organized, and it's continuing still more and more today. That's I think I think it's it's crucial to have uh, an ecosystem because, as you said, if you start, it, it's very hard to start a business, and if you start a business alone, uh, where where normally the rest of the people think that you are crazy, that you are doing you you better find a job and have a salary. So it's 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 crucial to to speak with other persons that are in your same situation and and exchange uh, feedback and. and for the reason, it's very important to, to create the ecosystem, to have events, to and to to talk with other persons like you, and, and to think that you are not the only one who is crazy. No? And but but you think it needs to be uh, local because we are like in the digital age. And uh, for example, if you take the example of girls in tech, uh, there is girls uh, almost everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, th does it be? True. So does it need to be uh, local, or can it be uh, like uh, so? It's like shifts the question to value. Like you need to share a set of value, I guess, to to create an ecosystem. And uh, what are those? Like entrepreneurship, but it's like a blend world. So it's like risk taking. What is it? I guess. Uh, well, yesterday we had the talk of uh, Meetup, no? uh, the founder of Meetup, yes. and and I think it's very important also to be local and and. Not only digital connections; you need to 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 meet them in person, to know who they are, to to start uh, trust, to to make uh, connections, no, with them. I think it's really necessary to to have all these local events and, and, and all of this. Yes, it's it's complementary, I would say. Mm -hmm. I think you gain a lot through um, an international on and and then uh, digital network. Uh, because the values that you share are the same in wherever you are, but you also need local uh, ecosystems, just like simply to have a, a space and an office and a place to, to work, uh, to exchange ideas, as you say, I think it's it's really important. Yeah, yeah well, I understand with you guys, uh, I think we, we need both. Uh, it's very important for startups to have uh, local clients and relations with uh, local investors, uh, local users and, and local uh, employees. So I think that's the basics. And we have to work on that local uh, aspect of it. But also, uh, yes, what is missing, I think, is a global uh, scape uh, of all that. Uh, we often say that in France, we have difficulty to, to launch startup worldwide and, and go in the US. Uh, I'm telling you, we will go in the US. Uh, we have a good ambition on that. Uh, but as now, uh, it's not an easy task uh, because we need just uh, more local contacts, global investors, global clients. We have global clients, so we will do it with our clients, but we're lucky. Uh, I'm not sure it's the case of all the startups. Uh, so we really need both. Uh, and that uh, global uh, aspect, uh, I think it, it has to be developed, it could be improved a lot. But with what you're saying, it's interesting. So it means like when you're like, a, let's say, a French startup and you want to move to Spain or to the US, uh, when you arrive there, it's good when you already have an ecosystem because, uh, I mean, uh, when you but ecosystem is too, too much of a broad world. So, but where do you knock on the door when you arrive in a new country? Like, uh, what, 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 is, uh, what is the places to go? Because you arrive, you're alone, you don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is where stuff like Girls in Tech and those can, can help you because it's like, International, yeah. 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 Um, well, no, no. No, but I just another question. Uh, uh, is it good? Okay, uh, because we speak uh, uh, about like uh, investors, students, and everything. But if we speak just of startups, you're a startup, and some of your customers are startups. And I always wonder, as a VC, as an investor, if it is a good thing or not. Because as an investor, I know that startups fail, mostly, unfortunately. Thank you. No. <laughs> And a few are successful. 
So, uh, and I always wonder, and is it a good thing or not to have startups as your, custo as your first customers? And because usually that's what happens, because as we say, you stay in the ecosystem, you meet the other, you make connections, and doing business is making connections. So what's your point of view on that? Well, yeah, it's a good question. Um, as I said before, my ex-boss always told me, when you're a startup, the last person you want to talk to is a startup. So I always told myself, OK, I'm a startup. I just want to talk to big guys, and, and, and I don't care really about the other ones. Uh, I'm sure, as you said before, we need to share experience with other entrepreneurs, I mean, psychologically, OK? Uh, and in terms of, of customers, uh, honestly, it's not ideal, uh, I think, to work with other startups. The main benefit I see for us, it's just our example, is that when we partner with uh, uh, cool companies like Drivey, like WeCar, like BlaBlaCar, who are our clients, uh, when they communicate on our partnerships, it's beneficial for us too. And that's the only reason why uh, we, we have an interest to work with these guys. Of course, they are, will become global and big one day. But today, yes, uh, it's not the guy who pays the most, uh, etc. So I would say it's not ideal, but uh, when you can communicate and, and, and try to surf on that cool, uh, on that cool uh, uh, phase of, of startups, uh, it's good. Okay. Uh, so back to you two. Uh, because you have like, similar activities, I think there is a feeling of uh, like uh, uh, you're looking, you're trying to educate people to uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, you with students, you with girls. <laughs> uh, so this is like, uh, isn't it something like the government should be doing, or like uh, why did you decide it to exist? Because you think it's something that was missing. Thanks. Um yeah, uh, we do think it was something that was missing, definitely. Um, there, there is still need um, for uh, specific actions, not only for girls, but in our case, this is what we've focused on. And um, by joining forces between different countries and uh, it, with a very large network, it empowers and it gives a voice to uh, things that are done, but would not necessarily have been known. So it gives a, a platform uh, to entrepreneurs that do things, but it also inspires others that maybe hesitate and, and doubt and that think that they're alone trying to do something uh, to move forward. So we're starting to see um, change happen. It's quite, quite slow. And also, uh, in the case of the tech industry, um, the image of new technologies, and especially with hacking and developers and coding, is ve still very has a very masculine image. So we we try and work a lot um, as much as possible to bring out um, other aspects of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it's exactly what what you are saying. No? Uh, we need to showcase the. Uh, the successful uh, cases. No? For, for the, the reason we are bringing, in our case, in the universities, two entrepreneurs that they are already successful. So they students can see that sometimes uh, this entrepreneur was in the, in, the, in the same university four years ago, and now he has created a success, successful company. So we, it's a way to show them that it's possible, that we are not inventing anything. You can talk with this guy that has created a company and he was in your place four years ago. And, and I was saying also that uh, in, in our, in Spain at least, I don't know here in France, but I guess also, uh, there's a, a, one of the real problems of, of the ecosystem, because in the ecosystem there are sim uh, several parts, but for us the, the, the worst problem is the culture, no? the, the fear to, to fail, uh, in Spain, it's, it's very uh, the, the risk uh, aversion. No? So uh, it's a, it's a it's it's a difficult thing to change. But I guess that showcasing these cases no, that uh, it's not that it's possible, uh, it could help to reduce this risk av uh, aversion. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about like let's say like competition between ecosystem? Because what you see uh, is that uh, everybody is talking about, uh, of course, the Silicon Valley, because this is uh, like the biggest uh, startup ecosystem. But in Europe, you're starting to see like a competition, like London wants to be the capital of uh, 
fintech, and people in Paris are saying uh, they want to do it too, but in Paris, some people see us as the capital of sharing economy. Uh, and, and so do you think like uh, you need to you need to build a, a brand with like a specific vertical uh, but, or it just happened by chance because I think that if like Paris is a, has a lot of sharing economy startup it's I mean it's not deterministic it just happened so I don't really uh, understand uh, like I mean can the public uh, sector can orientate that or sh should they do try to do that what do you think Tough question. <laughs> uh, I guess, well, I am speaking about uh, about uh, Barcelona ecosystem, okay, because I'm from Barcelona. Uh, I think that to become a specific uh, ecosystem, like you said, it, it comes naturally, no? uh, I guess. Uh, maybe when, when, when it is starting to become uh, naturally to a specific sector, for example, in Barcelona, we want to be the mobile capital. We have the Mobile World Congress and, and, and well, uh, the startup ecosystem uh, is, is going a little bit to the mobile uh, startups. No? But I think it, it came nat naturally and then when it came naturally, then the, the is when the public, uh, the public institutions can help with that, with bringing the, the Congress, uh, making some initiatives to help on that. But I guess, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on. And, um I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, do, do, do you think in investors are also innovating or they, they remain the same like uh, quite a lot of years? The, you think that it's necessary that investors also innovate like uh, startups are doing? Or what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, of course. Uh, we are, uh, I mean, uh, even if it's a VC industry uh, is not that old, like in Europe it's uh, 20, let's say 30 years old, in the US maybe 50, uh, but the venture capital is quite new and, uh, and it's uh, being attacked, uh, it's changing a lot in the recent years with all around the crowdfunding, like when entrepreneurs need money now, they can turn not only to VC, they can also turn to the crowd or with a Kickstarter, they can pre-finance when they do hardware as a project. So we obviously need to adapt to that. Uh, so it's a competition, but it's also something uh, we are trying to sit on the top of. Like if you look at AngelList, uh, it's great for us because it is a one-stop shop where you have all the startups present. So you can, you, you can parse that, you can see those kind of thing. And same thing with the startup ecosystem because uh, we are trying to be part of it, and most of the time when you have an initiative in town, uh, when people are creating like, uh, ecosystems, they all often want uh, investors to be part of it, because, uh, but because this is what down the road uh, the entrepreneur need at one point, they need some funding. And us, we see it as a proxy, because there is so many startups, like there is no one day I'm not receiving uh, a pitch, and it's, it's good, I like that. Uh, because people are creating stuff, but there is so many that you, you can't really manage everything on your own. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when you have some ecosystem, you have a proxy. Like, uh, for example, I worked uh, a lot with uh, WeShare. I mean, I know personally the guys from WeShare, and, uh, and they often send me some startups, say, oh, you should look at this, you should look at that. And, and uh, for me, it's great, because I know, okay, it went through the proxy of WeShare, I trust those people, and, uh, and so I, I will take time to, to meet them. So this is what, uh, what uh, is helping, uh, because I agree with you, like it's quite recent, this phenomenon of having like meetups. Uh, WeShare is another example of uh, like those organizations uh, that are an association or just link of people wanting to work together. It's new and uh, for investors, it's great. It's, it's crucial to have an environment that, that in which you are present and the guys from WeShare facilitators, we could be facilitators for startups. And, and I think the environment is one of the main ingredients for creating a great um, ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. But I, back to your point, I totally agree also. It's a question of, uh, it's more a cultural question of risk taking, because down the road, this is what it is. When you start a company, you just need to jump uh, and you don't know if you have a if you have a parachute, and you don't know what's going to happen. You just need to drop. So, 
So I would say my point of view is that, and but this is more or less what uh, I felt from uh, what you said, is that what you gain from uh, being inside an ecosystem or a group of people working together is like people encouraging you to jump and say, look, we did it, you can do it also, and we'll, we'll try to find people to help you doing it. Yeah, well, I'd just like to add maybe the, the level of, uh, of risk aversion is, uh, I think, a key question in the ecosystem. Uh, and uh, we believe uh, that, that it's maybe uh, it's a mentality change that has to be done, I don't know. But when you do a startup, you're the only one who, you, just, you take the most risk, and the risk is not always very shared by everyone. You need your partners to take risk with you. You need your investors to take risk with you, uh, and it's uh, it's not happening um, uh, as enough as uh, as it should be. Uh, and I think people should be more, uh, you know, testing, try and learn, you know, try and learn a, a way of of doing things, uh, because as you said before, they're just too afraid to fail, so they prefer not to test, <laughs> uh, whether you know, instead of just testing it and and, and if it fails, it fails. And uh, I think that's a problem for startups because obviously when they, they start something, it's new, so they need co to convince people to test it. And uh, we experience sometimes like endless discussions about what if, what if, what yeah. if, and we're like, what if we do nothing? <laughs> but uh, but do you feel that uh, startup really help each other? Because I can see like founders, like network of founders, or, or even uh, as an investor, we are trying to have our portfolio company working together. We do some CEO events, some CFO events to share uh, specific uh, know-how and uh, best practice. But they are like they have a common thing, which is the investor. But like, do you really think like startup help each other? Because I don't always see that. Because sometimes you have like competition. Sometimes also you don't have time to help the other because you're focused on your product. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I, have, I have friends who are startup founders, and I'm trying to help them. I just I just don't have time. And also, in the end, I'm telling you, I'm a kind of competitor to them. Because there is not room for everyone to succeed, even though they are not in my field. <laughs> uh, there can only be uh, 10 um, very successful startups in France. So I'm not saying that, but it, it's actually what's happening. So I wouldn't say there is a real impact of helping each other between the startups. That's my opinion. I don't know. But, uh, I, think, I think yes. I think that uh, it's... In the events that I'm going in Barcelona, I'm only seeing founders helping each other. I think, I think, of course, uh, uh, if it's if you if the startup is in the same field like you, it will be more difficult to 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 help each other, no? Because it's your competition. But I think that that yes, that the startups are helping each other much more than big corporations are helping each other. I think. I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, and uh, just a l uh, last question to round up. It's uh, we don't really cover that, it's, uh, or maybe a little bit. So, what is the value, like for example, like uh, each of you, like what is the value you're you're using as uh, the common denominator around your ecosystem? Um, I would say the common value is um, empowerment. Just uh, you know, feel free to take risks, feel free to dare, uh, be, do, try and do whatever you want to do, but, and, and we'll, we'll help empower this. I think that's the common value uh, for girls in tech in France, but all over. Uh, well, I will ask then to you what, what we can learn from the Silicon Valley ecosystem, because it seems to be the one of the best ecosystems, uh, startup ecosystems, what, what we can learn from them. But I think the, well, there's a lot of values that we commend no? the, the, to, to improve the connections, uh, to, to bring entrepreneurship in places that is not there, like in universities. Uh, the culture, uh, if you are, every, of course, everyone cannot be an entrepreneur, but if you are an entrepreneur, you can help maybe another entrepreneur to succeed. Uh, not like, for example, in my case, my family, my friends, m they are telling me, come on, look for a job. This is not, it's, it's difficult, and if you have this, it's even more difficult, so please help entrepreneurs to succeed. <laughs> and, and, and then also, I think that public institutions in Barcelona, we have a very good example, which is called Barcelona Activa. 
It is a place that with, uh, they help you to start a company and they have a lot of uh, free courses for entrepreneurs and, and they also tech focus courses and they help you to create a company and, and I think the public institutions can help a lot also in, in helping entrepreneurs. Yeah, no, I would say that uh, definitely and maybe there is even a bubble uh, in uh, incubator, accelerator, uh, but right now if you want to start a company, it's, uh, it's never easy, it's always really difficult to start a company, but it's easier than 10 years ago because you have so many places uh, where you can uh, start, like you don't start with a blank sheet, like uh, uh, you need to find co-founders, you know, you can go to meetups. Uh, there is also like a lot of uh, incubator giving free classes or even paying one but that are outside the university like in Paris here we have the family they are trying to do that a lot to form people to entrepreneurship so so and, and, and basically like I would say that this is what is an ecosystem is to have like bits of things like that when entrepreneurs can uh, take some small bites uh, together okay uh, I think we're done uh, do we have time for uh, Q&A Open it. Okay. We can open to the public if someone wants to ask something. Is there any questions? Yeah. Thank you. My question is mostly to Nicola uh, about uh, how you can combine the social impact, if we're talking about sharing economy, and uh, with my money. Okay, it's funny because I, I was here two years ago in the other tent and I have the same question. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? You mean that uh, why, uh, like VC shouldn't be uh, in the sharing economy? That's what you think? Well, no, I'm, I mean, personally, at the per I mean, my job, I'm paid uh, to invest, uh, to manage a fund with other people and invest the money and it's true to give a return to our investor because uh, VCs also raise funds. Uh, but how, how I'm trying to impact it is by choosing a business model uh, that has value and founders that have value, which is not uh, always the case. And by trying, obviously, to combine that with uh, uh, the value with a business model that can work, because it's true that we are not in, a, uh, in philanthropy. But uh, no, no, I don't have uh, trouble uh, going to sleep at night. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think that my job is uh, quite cool to listen to uh, people that have amazing ID and from time to time trying to support them if an, even if it's not easy, I'm not the only one to choose all the time, but uh, I, don't see, I don't see an antagonism between a, a sharing economy, a collaborative concentrum and, uh, and venture capitalism, but even though I know and, uh, and things are starting to move, we may need a better way to redistribute the value created, especially when uh, we build that on top of communities to the community. And now entrepreneurs are more and more aware of that and they are looking for investors that starting to think that way. I saw it, I had uh, the experience in, in the recent months uh, around that. And we'll have a special Q&A about investment and just after, that's it. Any other question? You understood everything, it's very clear. Now you can start a striving startup ecosystem. <laughs> Any last words? Yeah, yeah, okay. So you, you were talking about building a, a thriving startup ecosystem. And how can we, so I mean ag agency kind of, how can we people who are not in startups but interested in working with them, can we like help them but not be like a charity thing. Because when we work with uh, startups, we know that they basically have zero money. And we're like, okay, we want to work with you. We can work with you. We're really interested in your project, but well, we cannot do anything because well, your budget is this and we also need to eat at the end of the, mo the, the month. So how do you do about uh, building a thriving startup ecosystem that can include people that have some knowledge and skills that can be used by them. Uh, okay, M maybe an idea would be to um, introduce yourself to an incubator or a tech hub uh, in your area.
and see what they're doing with startups and become part of that community. And maybe you could work not only for one startup, but with, for several at the same time. Uh, and, and you could work in, in a cycle of things. Yeah. So maybe you could share knowledge at some point at the beginning, get known, get seen, discuss, uh, connect, and then little by little grow a network. And some of these startups are small at the beginning and then will succeed. So it's all about also, also kind of taking risks and 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 you know empowering startups at the beginning and and you know. So it's like a form of, of marketing. Like uh, you have like big comp uh, like uh, for example, what's your name? A big auditing company, a PwC, I think. Uh, they are they are doing like audit for a lot of startup, and uh, I guess that they lose money uh, for the for, uh, the beginning because they don't charge them what they should charge, but they hope that one or two or three of them are going to become big. But uh, no, but I, I guess uh, the best answer is like trying to work with a cluster, and and not having just one customer, but having the cluster paying you to help the startups. And then maybe adapt your value proposition in order to reduce costs from your side, or, or as he said that maybe you can choose those startups that are, are very cool. And maybe you can do an offer, but you have an example to show, a cool example to show to, to uh, your potential customer. Or maybe also, I, I'm, I, it's a very good question because I'm in the other side, so I'm also pressing you to reduce the, <laughs> the price. But um, maybe, I'm, sometimes I'm thinking, it would be nice that I can pay you now only 20% and if I succeed, the rest or something like that. Maybe they can find formulas like that, but but it's risky, yeah. <laughs> Is there a last question? Thank you. A, a question regarding the venture funds of large corporations. So maybe uh, for you, Nicola, um, when you have like big companies investing in startups, do you see it maybe as an advantage or as something good for the startup as a sign of uh, um, being a reliable company, so what's your perspective on that? And for the startups, uh, do you see it as something valuable? And if yes, in which way? Compared probably to other sources of financing as well. Well, uh, what we've heard a lot is that it's a bit dangerous as a startup to have an investor who is a large corporate because you, you, you yeah, enter into a a logic, uh, which is the logic of your investor, which is part of the economy. Uh, and it, this logic can be sometimes opposed to other logics. Uh, and uh, well, I'm talking to Orkis because we were working with the big clients and we'll never accept that one of our big clients invest in our company. Uh, for that reason of, 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 of interest, we could be not aligned. Uh, I don't know about the other startups uh, but I just heard a lot about these kind of examples, saying be careful. So uh, I think some startups are, are more frightened uh, by that uh, than uh, than other other companies. Uh, and then on the investor side, I don't know. But uh yeah, no, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of the same. Like uh, obviously, we'd rather uh, see startups that have a big corporation as customers. But uh, as shareholder, uh, it raises question because we're like, okay, uh, they, it shows that they believe in it, but maybe also they want just to start buying it back. And uh, and when we invest in a startup and uh, and, we, and 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 the entrepreneur, really, we want them to be ambitious and not to start to think, okay, I want to sell myself in the next two years. Uh, whereas we want them most of the time <laughs> trying to build something uh, sustainable. But uh, but it's also yeah, you remind me of a point uh, you forgot to cover is large corporation are definitely part of the ecosystem. They finance it a lot uh, by, uh, for example, sponsoring, uh, we don't have sponsor in the back, but uh, <laughs> sponsoring those kind of event. And I used to work, before being a VC, I used to work for the French postal services, where I was more or less uh, with other people in charge of uh, building the relationship with the ecosystem. And what I would always say to the startups is, okay, well, I'm going to try to help you do business with us, but don't put all on that, because even if we're big and maybe one day it will be a big contract, it's going to take so much time that you'll be dead twice 
uh, before other things end up. So that's always the way I warn startups. Try to work with big corporation, but uh, don't put all your eggs in the same basket uh, because they don't move as fast as you. You're not in the same space-time uh, era. That's it. Thank you very much. Well, I think we can give a good, big applause to Nicolas, Johanna, Sébastien, and Joanne for the start of this uh, startup exploration. Thank you very much.